Well, hello there. Welcome to another episode of Needlepoint TV. I'm Ellen Johnson, and I'm going to be your host today as we talk about all things beads. So if you have ever used beads on your Needlepoint projects, you know how they can add lots of sparkle and bling to your projects, to your canvases. And it's just one of my favorite ways to add extra pizzazz to holiday pieces. So there are lots of different kinds of beads that you can use on your Needlepoint canvases. Campuses. You have seed beads, bugle beads, delica beads, there are faceted beads. Golly, they, the list just goes on and on. But the most common types of beads that you're going to find used on needlepoint canvases are going to be seed beads. Um, those are the kind that you can, that they come in little tubes. And let me reach over here and grab some really quickly. Hold on one second. Sorry about that. <laughs> so anyway, they come in small tubes. And let me see if I can get this open and I'll show you what they look like. So seed beads are exactly like they sound. They're little bitty beads that can be used to embellish your canvases. And we may have to take a break. Um, yeah, looks like Ellen didn't grab the beads before she sat down. So we'll come back to that in just a second. Let me, in fact, let's hop over and look at my website because there is an article over on the Serendipity Needleworks website that um, is all about uh, using different kinds of beads on your needlepoint canvases. So let me just go here. And you can see, all right, well, there's that. That's to sign up. Um, if you go to our blog, then come over here and type in, there's a place for you to search for things. So if you type in beads, then that'll pull up the article, um, any article that has beads in it. But bring on the beads is the article that I'm talking about. So you can see that um, I have some tips here for using different kinds of beads. And, um, and then, of course, I love to use the Bowen beading needles. And I also use a type of thread, a waxed beading thread. I'll show you some of that here in just a sec, too. I did grab that. And then as well, we have a fun sheet that shows you how to make your own bead case so that you don't end up having to chase beads across the living room floor. Um, because sometimes when they spill out of their tubes, it can be a challenge to uh, to keep up with them or to find them. So I would recommend that you go over to the Serendipity Needleworks website and take a look at this article because it does have some interesting information in it. And um, so that would be a great place for you to get a good start on um, information about beads. So <clears throat> here is, this is actually... Um, a Nemo type beading thread. And I know the red's going to show up better on camera than that yellow wheel, but it comes in little spools like this. So the way you use this thread and, and you, a lot of needlepoint stores carry this, but if you happen not to have a local needlepoint store in your area, you can also get this, an, an entire tube of different colors um, on Amazon. So that's where, that's where this came from. Um, but what you're going to do is you're going to pull off a piece of thread, however long you want it to be. I usually use a doubled thread when I'm working on a needlepoint canvas with beads. And the reason I do that is because it's stronger. So cut off a piece, whatever size um, or whatever length you need, just snip it off. And here's a little trick that you're going to find super, super helpful. Um, and it's it's the reason it's going to be helpful is because the beading thread, you'll notice when you pull it off, I'm, I guess you can see that. I'm not sure you can. Let me do this. Let me switch cameras so you can see it over on um, a, a little bit closer up. So let me switch the camera so you can see. So you can, whoops, you can see how curly it is. So <clears throat> one of the things you're going to want to do, let me get back over here so you can see me again. You're going to want to take this and you're going to want to pull on it, just kind of pop it. And what that does is it it actually um, releases that that curl. So now it's it's you can well 
you'll be able to see. Let me show you again. I should have kept the camera over there. Hold on one second. So you can see the difference between, I hope you can see the difference, between the two pieces. This side is the side that I've stretched. This side has not been stretched yet. And the reason I do that is because I do want to make sure that I get any slack or any stretch out of the thread before I go and use it. Because if you don't, the thread can actually stretch after you've stitched with it. And so your beads will get floppy on the surface of your canvas. I mentioned that I like to use a, a um, Bowen beading needle. And so this, this beading case is one that I actually purchased because, of course, hey, Paris is always a good idea, right? Inside the case is a magnet. It's just a, a little magnet that's stuck on the inside. And then there's a sticky mat that you can pour your beads out on and they literally will not fall off. They'll stay there. So I have a beading needle attached to or just magnetically stuck to that magnet. The um, little guide that we have, the fun sheet that we have on our website shows you how to make your own one of these using a uh, business card case. And then we the materials are listed for you uh, so that you can get the same kind of mat and um, and then the magnet too, to, to make your own beading case if you want to do that. And they make great Christmas gifts for your friends that are stitchers too. So just a fun little thing that you can maybe pull together and, and gift to some of your stitching buddies. Okay, so I'm going to have to concentrate just a second and thread this needle. Hold on. Beading needles are tiny. And the reason they're tiny is because they have to fit through the the hole in the middle of the bead. I mentioned that there are um, different kinds of beads. So let me just go back and run over those quickly. Seed beads are tiny little beads. Um, the same, uh, the picture that is on our, let me see, let me go, <clears throat> hold on one sec. Let me go back to and share my screen so that you can see. Let's see, here we go. And this is the one I want. So if you look up here at the top, these are seed beads. They're little round fat beads with a hole in the center. There's another kind of bead that's a bugle bead. A bugle bead is a long tube type bead. Now they come in um, different lengths. So you're going to find the, the small ones, the medium length ones, and then the longer ones. You can use those for all kinds of different applications on your canvases. There's also a bead called a Delica bead. And the Delica bead is actually a cylinder bead as well. And it's it's really what it amounts to is it is a, a bugle bead or a, a cylinder of glass that's been cut into small pieces that are about the same size as um, a seed bead. So they're tiny like seed beads too, but they are truly um, perfectly round or cylindrical as opposed to a seed bead being kind of fat and almost like a donut. And it, the, the seed beads, the one thing you'll have to be very mindful of when you're working with seed beads is that the centers or the holes in the middle are not going to necessarily be consistently the same size, not nearly as much as they will be on the Delica beads. So um, if you find yourself having a bunch that you have to toss because your needle won't go through the middle when you're working with seed beads, that's normal. So just expect that. Um, usually they're sold in tubes that have so many in them that you're not going to use more than what you have. So you should be in good shape. Um, and, and it's not like you're going to be tossing out more than half by any stretch, more, more like maybe 10 to 20 percent. All right. So when and I, I mentioned on um, that I was going to on the uh, description that I was going to show you all how to do the technique that is on my canvas that I stitched, Emerald Garden, it's the center of this flower. Whoops, the center, let me see if I can get it up close so you can see. It's the center of this lavender colored flower. That's a technique that's called messy beading and it's really fun to do. So I'm gonna show you how to do that, but I'm gonna have to ask you to bear with me for just a short minute while I hop up and go grab the beads because I Silly me, I left them in the other room. So in my haste to get down here to make sure I had everything set up, of course, I left something in the other room. So I will be right back 
take a second to stretch, pet the kitty, but just know I'll be right back. <clears throat> Okay. Whoops. Okay. That wasn't, wasn't too bad. I hope. I, again, I apologize for that little delay there. So I mentioned that I love beads. Now this is just one of my mini bags of beads. I have several, several containers um, of beads. And one of my favorite ways, oh, let me show you this. So this is a this is an example of the kind of beading thread that you'll probably find at your local needlepoint store. This is uh, Sundance Beads uh, distributes this and it's the same, really it's the same thing as this. Um, it's, it's a, I don't know that the Sundance thread is waxed, but this is a particular kind. This is Eslon. If you are looking for beading thread, you can many times find beading thread at uh, jewelry making shops, bead shops. So a Nemo is another manufacturer that makes really nice beading thread. You can use wax, uh, beeswax, natural beeswax on sewing thread. And that works very well for beading as well. If you don't happen to have any beading thread handy, um, you can just use sewing machine thread or you can use cotton embroidery floss or silk thread, silk floss. Um, and you can, you, you and, and if you're using cotton embroidery floss, you'll use one strand doubled. Same thing is true if you're using silk embroidery floss, use one strand doubled. I don't typically don't wax silk, but I do wax cotton. So you can use, uh, again, I, I prefer using 100% pure beeswax, not the um, manufactured beeswax. Um, and, and I don't use, I know there's a product called, I think it's called Thread Magic. I don't use that personally, but I know many, many people who do. So if you have that in your stash and you want to use it, you can obviously do that as well. So beads come, let me put the, the beading thread back in here. The beading, the bead tubes that I was going to show you, and let me use some green ones so we can see, we'll make this a holiday. Um, themed event here. So there are a couple of companies that you're going to find that um, beads from in needlepoint stores. The collection is one and their tubes are kind of short and fat. And then we also have the long skinny tubes, which is um, those, those beads are typically the Sundance beads. So what I'll do now is, um, oh, and something else. If you're working on 13 mesh canvas, you're typically going to want to use size 11 beads. And if you're working on 18 mesh canvas, you'll want to use size 14 or 15 beads. All right. So let's go ahead and switch over to the other camera so that you can watch me do some messy beading. All right. Let's see. Here we go. <clears throat> and I will pour some out here. I'm going to let me scooch my chair over just a little bit. So I will show you when you open up one of these tubes, you have to be kind of careful to make sure you don't go too fast. Otherwise, when you pop the top off, the beads are going to go flying across the floor. So I'm just going to be real careful careful because these are filled up you can see i hope well maybe you can you can see they're filled up pretty pretty full the tubes are pretty full all right so now to work with my little bead tray all i have to do is just pour a few and see how they stick isn't that the coolest thing so all right now let me put the top back on these on this tube on these beads and the way I start when I'm working with um, with beads is that I'm I pierce a canvas thread to bring my needle through to the front. Now I'm gonna have to let's see. I need to make sure you can see where I am and that I can see where I am. So I'm gonna come up from the back through 
a canvas thread. And y'all, you have to be careful. If you have a thimble, this would be a good time to use it because these little tiny beading needles are so, even on the eye end, you can poke a hole in your finger very quickly. All right, so I've pierced a canvas thread. To do messy beading, what you're going to do is you're going to pick up one, two, three beads on your beading needle and then you're going to slide them down and then you can go ahead and take a stitch and what they do is they they cluster up on top of your canvas now i'm using a contrasting thread so that you can see the difference between the bead and the thread um because I think that makes it easier for you to see what I'm doing. Typically, you're going to want to match your beading thread to your um, to your beads so that the thread doesn't show up. But again, just put three little beads on your needle, and slide them down to the end, and take a stitch. And you can do that to fill up, like I did on the flower. Um, you can use that to fill up the center of a flower or whatever kind of area you you have that you want to add a little bit of extra texture to the area um, with the beads. Now I can jump down here and I can take a stitch going the opposite direction because remember we're not being real precise with where um, we are. I, well, get yeah, I guess we're not. We are being somewhat precise, but we're we're doing this is this is not like tent stitch beading or um, you know a, a basket weave beading. This is this is messy beading, so we have a little more um, leeway in in what we do where we place our stitches. So, if I just wanted to fill in an area, uh, painted area on my canvas, then I could definitely just do that and use this technique, which is what I did with the flower canvas. Um, that I showed you just a few minutes ago. So again, pick up one, two. You could pick up more. I typically just pick up three. If you wanted to use more beads, then it would just make them sit up higher on the surface of the canvas. Slide them down and then take your needle across a canvas intersection. And so that is how you do messy beading. Super fun, super easy, and, um, and, and I just love it. So I love the finished effect. All right, so let me come back over here and just tell you again, thank you for joining me here today. Um, I would highly encourage you, if you've not ever used beads on your canvases before, please give it a try. It's not nearly as hard as you might think it is. Again, check out over on the Serendipity Needleworks website. We do have the article. Um, and so let me see if I can pull up the website address. So there you go. There's our website address. And if you'll just go to the blog tab and then once you get to the blog, then there is a search bar at the top right on the top right side. And you can just type in beads and it'll pull up. <clears throat> excuse me, y'all, sorry, pull up the articles that have uh, reference to beads in them, but you want the one that says bring on the beads because that's going to give you information about getting started using beads on your needlepoint canvases. All right. Again, thanks for being here with me. If you like to use beads on your canvases, tell me down in the comments below. I always love to know who has done the different kinds of things that I'm talking about here. Goodness gracious. <clears throat> Excuse me, got a frog in my throat. Doesn't want to let me go. Um, but I would love to know how you've used beads on your canvases if you have. Um, if you've ever done messy beading, let me know that. Um, just share with me your experience with using beads on your needlepoint canvases. I always love hearing from you. It's just a great joy to, to get to share my love of needlepoint with others. If you haven't already subscribed to our channel, make sure that you do that. Um, all you have to do is just click that little red subscribe button and you'll be all set. If you want notices for any time we're going live, then click the, red, the little bell as well. And uh, we'd also love for you to, if you don't already subscribe to uh, my weekly emails that go out every Thursday, there is a place on our website for you to do that as well. So until next time, I hope you have a terrific rest of your day and happy stitching. 
Bye for now.